Good morning. It's Monday, May April 13th, and um, we are going to begin to read um, daily and provide some notes. So um, we had been previously in class before we went on distance learning. We had started reading Charlotte's Web, and now it's been a few weeks since we had worked on it. Um, I'm actually going to start over again. So I'll be reading through this book, Charlotte's Web, uh, with the students. And we will be um, taking notes as we go. We'll read two chapters a day. And so it'll cover about 11 days of work. And um, we'll provide about three notes a day for the students. Um, they are able to copy them um, off of the screen as I will be sharing them as we read and we leave them up. And so uh, we'll be beginning today. Let me um, share my screen uh, with you guys and pull up the um, Charlotte's Web notes. Um, it's down a little bit. Go. And so, um, first of all, um, they're going to need to put their name on the paper. Um, some students will want a copy name. That's fine, but please have them put their name on there and the date, as this is good practice for them to remember um, the actual date. Um, as we try to write on our papers throughout the day, as well as our name for practice. Um, and then also the title of our reading today, as we typically title it, is Charlotte's Web. Um, which is our book title, and we'll be reading chapters one and two. So uh, they can go ahead and start copying this. Um, I'm going to begin to read for them. And um, chapter one, before breakfast. Where's Papa going with that ax? Said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast. Out to the hog house, replied Miss Arable. Some pigs were born last night. I don't see why he needs an ax, continued Fern, who was only eight. Well, said her mother, one of the pigs is a runt. He is very small and weak, and it will never amount to anything. So your father has decided to do away with it. Do away with it, shrieked Fern. You mean kill it, just because it's smaller than the others? Miss Arable put a pitcher of cream on the table. Don't yell, Fern, she said. Your father is right. The pig would probably die anyway. Fern pushed a chair out of the way and ran outdoors. The grass was wet and the earth smelled of springtime. Fern's sneakers were sopping by the time she caught up with her father. Please don't kill it, she sobbed. It's unfair. Mr. Arable stopped walking. Fern, he said gently, you will have to learn to control yourself. Control myself, yelled Fern. This is a matter of life and death. And you talk about controlling myself? Tears ran down her cheeks and she took hold of the ax and tried to pull it out of her father's hand. Fern, said Mr. Arable, I know more about raising a litter of pigs than you do. A weakling makes trouble. Now run along. But it's unfair, cried Fern. The pig couldn't help being born small, could it? If I had been very small at birth, would you have killed me? Mr. Arable smiled. Certainly not, he said, looking down at his daughter with love. But this is different. A little girl is one thing. A little runty pig is another. I see no difference, replied Fern, still hanging on to the axe. This is the most terrible case of injustice I've ever heard of. A queer look came over John Arable's face. He seemed almost ready to cry himself. All right, he said. You go back to the house and I will bring the runt when I come in. I'll let you start it on a bottle like a baby. Then you'll see what trouble a pig can be. When Mr. Arable returned to the house half an hour later, he carried a carton under his arm. Fern was upstairs changing her sneakers. The kitchen table was set for breakfast, and the room smelled of coffee, bacon, damp plaster, and wood smoke from the stove. Put it on her chair, said Miss Arable. Miss Arable had set the, Mr. Arable set the carton down at Fern's place. Then he walked to the sink and washed his hands and dried them on the roller towel. Fern came slowly down the stairs. Her eyes were red from crying. As she opposed her chair, the carton wobbled, and there was a scratching noise. Fern looked at her father, then she lifted the lid of the carton, there inside, looking up at her, was the newborn pig. It was a white one. The morning light shone through its ears, turning them pink. Pink. He's yours, Mr. Arable, said Mr. Arable, saving, saving from an untimely death. And may the good Lord forgive me for this foolishness. So, our first note is that um, Fern has saved a runt pig from being killed. Now, the runt pig is actually a pig that's born really small compared to the rest of them. And so a lot of times it would naturally die um, because it uh, would not be able to get to its mom to get food um, appropriately. 
So, uh, but firm begging and making the request has saved the pig and he will have a chance now to live if Fern can take care of him appropriately. Fern couldn't take her eyes off the tiny pig. Oh, she whispered. Oh, look at him. He's absolutely perfect. She closed the carton carefully. First she kissed her father, then she kissed her mother, then she opened the lid again, lifted the pig out and held it against her cheek. At this moment, her brother Avery came into the room. Avery was 10. He was heavily armed with an air, an air rifle in one hand, a wooden dagger in the other. What's that, he demanded. What's Fern got? She's got a guess for breakfast, said Miss Arable. Wash your hands and face, Avery. Let's see it, said Avery, setting his gun down. You call that miserable thing a pig? That's a fine specimen of a pig. It's no bigger than a white rat. Wash up and eat your breakfast, Avery, said his mother. The school bus will be along in half an hour. Can I have a pig too, Pop? asked Avery. No, I only distribute pigs to early risers, said Mr. Arable. Fern was up at daylight trying to rid the world of injustice. As a result, she now has a pig. A small one to be sure, but nevertheless a pig. It just shows what can happen if a person gets out of bed promptly. Let's eat. But Fern couldn't eat until her pig had had a drink of milk. Miss Arable found a baby's nursing bottle and a rubber nipple. She poured warm milk into the bottle fitted the nipple over the top and handed it to Fern. Give him his breakfast, she said. A minute later, Fern was seated on the floor in the corner of the kitchen with an infant between her knees, teaching it to suck from the bottle. The pig, although tiny, had a good appetite and caught on quickly. The school bus honked from the road. Run, commanded Miss Arable, taking the pig from Fern and slipping a donut into her hand. Avery grabbed his gun and another donut. The children ran out to the road and climbed into the bus. Fern took no notice of the others in the bus. She just sat and stared out of the window, thinking what a blissful world it was and how lucky she was to have an entire charge of a pig. But the time, by the time the bus reached the school, Fern had named her pet, selecting the most beautiful name she could think of. Its name is Wilbur, she whispered to herself. She was still thinking about the pig when the teacher said, Fern, what is the capital of Pennsylvania? Wilbur, replied Fern dreamily. The pupils giggled, Fern blushed. So Fern, after feeding it and going to school, decided while on her way to school that she was gonna name the pig Wilbur. So our little pig that's been saved by Fern now has a name and he'll be called Wilbur. So when you hear about Wilbur in the rest of the book, we're talking about the pig. So chapter two is actually named Wilbur. Fern loved Wilbur more than anything. She loved to stroke him, to feed him, to put him to bed. Every morning, as soon as she got up, she warmed his milk, tied his bib on, and held the bottle for him. Every afternoon when the school bus stopped in front of her house, she jumped out and ran to the kitchen to fix another bottle for him. She fed him again at supper time, and again just before going to bed. Miss Arable gave him a feeding around noontime each day when Fern was away in school. Wilbur loved his milk, and it was he was happy never happier than when Fern was warming up a bottle for him. He would stand and gaze up at her with adoring eyes. For the first few days of life, Wilbur was allowed to live in, the, in a box near the stove in the kitchen. Then when Miss Arable complained, he was moved to a bigger box in the woodshed. At two weeks of age, he was moved outdoors. It was apple blossom time and the days were getting warmer. Mr. Arable fixed a small yard, especially for Wilbur under an apple tree and gave him a large wooden box full of straw with a doorway cut in it so he can walk in and out as he pleased. Won't he be cold at night, asked Fern. No, said her father. You watch and see what he does. Carrying a bottle of milk, Fern sat down under the apple tree inside the yard. Fern ran to her, Wilbur ran to her, and she held the bottle for him while he sucked. When he had finished the last drop, he grunted and walked sleepily into the box. Fern peered through the door. Wilbur was poking the straw with his snout. In a short time, he had dug a tunnel in the straw. He crawled into the tunnel and disappeared from sight. Completely covered with straw, Fern was enchanted. It relieved her to mind to know that the baby would sleep covered up and would stay warm. Every morning after breakfast, Wilbur walked out to the road with Fern and waited with her till the bus came. She would wave goodbye to him and he would stand and watch the bus until it vanished around a turn. While Fern was in school, Wilbur was shut up inside his yard. But as soon as she got home in the afternoon, she would take him out and he would follow her around the place. 
If she went into the house, Wilbur went too. If she went upstairs, Wilbur would wait at the bottom step until she came down again. If she took her doll for a walk in the doll carriage, Wilbur followed along. Sometimes on these journeys, Wilbur would get tired and Fern would pick him up and put him in the carriage alongside the doll. He liked this, and if he was very tired, he would close his eyes and go to sleep under the doll's blanket. He looked, very, looked cute when his eyes were closed because his lashes were so long. The doll would close her eyes too, and Fern would wheel the carriage very slowly and smoothly as to not wake her infants. One warm afternoon, Fern and Avery put on, a bathing, on bathing suits and went down to the brook for a swim. Wilbur tagged at Fern's heels. When she waded into the brook, brook, Wilbur waded in with her. He found the water quite cold, too cold for his liking. So while the children swam and played and splashed water at each other, Wilbur amused himself in the mud along the edge of the brook, where it was warm and moist and delightfully sticky and oozy. Every day was a happy day and every night was peaceful. Wilbur was what farmers call a spring pig, which simply means that he was born in the springtime. When he was five weeks old, Mr. Arable said he was now big enough to sell and would have to be sold. Fern broke down and wept, but her father was firm about it. Wilbur's appetite had increased. He was beginning to eat scraps of food in addition to milk. Mr. Arable was not willing to provide for him any longer. He had already sold Wilbur's 10 brothers and sisters. He's got to go, Fern, he said. You have had your fun raising a baby pig, but Wilbur is not a baby any longer, and he's got to be sold. Call up the Zuckermans, suggested Miss Arable to Fern. Your Uncle Homer sometimes raises a pig, and if Wilbur goes there to live, you can walk down the road and visit him as often as you like. How much money should I ask him for? Fern wanted to know. Well, said her father, he's a runt. Tell your Uncle Homer you have a pig you'll sell for $6 and see what he says. It was soon arranged. Fern phoned and got her Uncle Edith, Aunt Edith, and her Aunt Edith hollered for Uncle Homer, and Uncle Homer came in from the barn and talked to Fern. When he heard that the price was only $6, he said he would buy the pig. Next day, Wilbur was taken from his home under the apple tree and went to live in the manure pile in the cellar of Zuckerman's barn. So that's the end of chapter two, and our third note today will be that Fern sold Wilbur to her uncle. So Fern took care of him, about five weeks old, and once he got to be too big, um, her dad made him sell her, made her sell him, but her uncle was willing to buy him. So she sold him to her uncle, which is a farm next door, so she can then walk down and see him and visit him um, every day that she wanted to. So I'll give you a few little bit to finish these up. This is a video, so you can pause this here and um, get this finished as well. Well, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Uh, we'll read chapters three and four at that point and provide some more notes. Um, we hope you have a good rest of the day um, and get your work done. Thank you.